What is up, my friends? It's your old pal, Closet Gamer, back again for some more Age of Engineering. That is right. Um, I'm just over in Closet Cam at the moment because I've just been doing um, a little bit of balancing and a little bit of tweaking and stuff. Um, we did have a bit of a sulfur problem. The uh, the Void Miner, or sorry, not the Void Miner, yeah, the Void Miner, the Void Resource Miner that I hooked up here, was not really doing the job in terms of getting a sufficient amount of netherrack because um, if you remember we were using netherrack and uh, we were uh, putting it through a sag mill which was giving us sulfur it wasn't really doing the job particularly well um, so I've disabled that um, and I've created a, like a little bit of an extension to closet chem and uh, over here I've got a blaze spawner um, and I'll just show you what I've done so uh, over here in terms of sulfur I've got this hooked up to a little um, ME system um, and this is a storage monitor here, or a storage bus, I should say. Um, it's uh, basically just looking at the amount of sulfur that's in this system. And then underground, uh, like round about here, I've just got a little ME controller with a little level emitter on it. Um, and when the level goes below a certain amount, let's set this to, um, how much did we say we had in there? If we set it to 700, what will happen is it will spawn the old blazes that will give us blaze rods in a ranged collector that's down here. Then that will be fed over into a sag mill here. Um, and it gives us uh, like a 50% chance, I think it is, of getting sulfur. And if you put in the old dark steel balls, then that increases that quite a bit. Then um, what happens is the blaze powder comes out uh, and there's a buffer chest there. Um, and But the blaze powder is getting compressed back into blaze rods. So it's four blaze powder, gives you one blaze rod, okay? And uh, so what you're essentially doing is you're losing one blaze powder every time you grind up a blaze rod, but you're probably gaining um, one sulfur, uh, well, one sulfur for every two rods that you uh, that you grind up, probably, pretty much. And that is, that is enough, um, so it switches off by itself. Um, that is probably enough, or is enough actually, it is enough, to keep us well and truly topped up with sulfuric acid. And it's completely self-contained as well, apart from the little bit of RF that we're giving this thing. I mean, it's it's taken up our backlog pretty, pretty well actually. So we've got nothing in the backlog now, which means that the slowest part of our system is the amount of ore that we've got coming in, which is really good. That's what I wanted to get to. But you can see these guys are still whacking out a fair amount of uh, a fair amount of stuff. Yes, lots and lots of uh, bits and pieces coming through here. And you can see it's just a nice steady, steady flow of resources. Doesn't ever really get overloaded. Um, I'd like to have a bit of a backlog, um, if I tell the truth. Um, so what I might do is put maybe maybe change this guy because uh, all we need to do really is change the top part into a um, into a miner for for ores we can maybe do that and then that will give us a little boost give us a little boost maybe and then what I've also got over here actually is um, I've got some macerators and um, a couple of sag mills uh, because basically all the stuff that can't go through our um, five times chain is coming over here now and going through a various uh, various array of filters and things uh, to separate all of the the nether ores and things that need to come out so stuff like Benito white and shoulder night and resonating ore goes straight through the system um, stuff like uh, pyrite and shoulder night Benito no 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 what am I talking about um, there's some stuff let me just show you this time right, there's some stuff that comes in into the macerators so all of this stuff so sphalerite, pyrite, benitoite, ruby ore, draconium ore all goes through the macerators there's some stuff that goes into the sag mills so ruby ore and rubies uh, and there's some stuff that just gets smelted so this is uh, pretty much a self-contained system now so all of our ore processing is done over here and the reason that I've got that set up let me just uh, turn this back down otherwise these guys are going to be turn this off Jesus Christ that should switch off now good lovely nice bit of peace and quiet um, so the reason I've got this all set up over here now is because um, I wanted to free up some space in the base um, now let me just whiz back home 
So I've moved uh, my Mata Receiver across. Um, so that is now in the temple. It's no longer in the old base. And I've created this little area here. Um, so this is like the little control station for our temple. And I've got a little RF tool screen there with some useful information. So that is the amount of power that we've got stored in our core. That is the RF per tick in. Um, and if you shift right click on there, you can um, you can see these different modules that we've got on here. Modules, they're a piece of piss to make. They're not bad at all. Um, and the screen itself is uh, really easy as well. What you need though is uh, just underneath this block here. Um, if I just destroy this block for a sec. I'll just destroy this block. You've got this thing called a screen controller which you need to give power. And you click scan and it connects the screen. And then you can load in the different modules and stuff. Um, for the uh, for the monitoring of the um, RF, what you need to do is you need to get an energy module, but you can't click the uh, the orb itself. You have to click the uh, pylon below it. So you have to click it on this one, and it will uh, detect uh, that as the uh, as the main power source, or sorry, the main power storage, and then it will display the amount of uh, the amount of juice that you've got in your draconic core. So you can see at the moment we're running at a negative, we're running at a loss. Um, and I think that's because, yes, I think that's because our um, solar panel in the um, in the mining world, I think it, it might be a bit cloudy over there. Right, so what else have we done? What else have we done in the days that have, uh, that have passed since I last spoke to you? Um, I've started mo- The fuck? Dude. <laughs> okay. Um, right. Um, what, what have we done? Right. So I've created some. I've moved over basically lots of stuff. Um, it'll probably be best actually if I just show you the old base. Let's get out of here. Let's go over to here. This is really, really annoying me. Right. Oh shit. I'm invaded. Skeletons and zombies everywhere. I wonder if I can just sleep. Can I sleep? Good. Um, right, so I haven't moved over any of this stuff. I still need to do this. Um, kind of halfway in the middle of doing that. Um, and this is a bit of a nuisance as well because it's quite a complicated setup to move across. Um, mainly the filters and things. I've fixed up the floor because the floor was battered. This is still here. All of the calculator stuff is still there. Um, and all of our RF tools control... Uh, distribution system for what was this for? This was for fire diamonds and blaze rods. Um, it's still all online though. Let me just check. This is still yeah, it's still all online. That's good. Um, I've moved or basically disabled all of the stuff that I had here. So if you remember, I had some macerators and things there. That's all gone now. That's all gone over to the mining dimension. The only thing that remains over here. Uh, this is our setup for our. Um, for our singularities, which was offline by the way, um, I hadn't even noticed it was completely offline and it wasn't working, uh, but now it is working so I fixed it, it works perfectly well, um, that's that, um, I've moved over I've moved over pretty much everything um, what my, my aim is is to probably get rid of this quantum ring and just have one cable coming over from our base over there uh, that's the idea anyway um, so I've started just moving stuff over. Now there's a bit of a problem over here because there's a bat in there. Um, this is where we create our nutrient, our nutrient distillation over here. And this tank is a bit buggy as well. Watch this. I'll get rid of this and then I'll put it back. It's full up now. See, weird, weird, weird buggy tank. Um, these are making nutrient distillation for us. Well, they would be if they actually had some uh, some rotten flesh, but um, everything switched off at the minute. Um, but we could switch those on actually. Um, I don't think I need much rotten flesh though, to be honest. Yes, I know. Last episode, I said I wasn't going to use my angel ring much, but I prefer it actually over my jetpack. Um, so I've got my jetpack switched off, and this is much better because look, you can just it's just like creative flight. It's good. It doesn't just hover by itself. You can jump still, and it's not until you double jump that you just start flying. Fan freaking tastic! I still need to move this over. Um, basically, all of the machines that are a pain in the ass to move, I haven't moved. Okay, um, so there are some bits I have moved though. So let's go over to uh, the IC2 room, and if you want, um, 
these little guys down here, you can put like an icon in there. It makes it easier to find where you're going. I can't remember who said that. I think it was either Lord Pine or it was probably Triax actually. Was it Lord Pine or Triax? I can't remember. Um, either one of you two, thank you very much. Very, very useful. Uh, I still need to blend these in. So these are all my IC2 machines, as you can see. They're all hooked up to uh, to um, interfaces here. Um, so that's, you know, that's fairly straightforward stuff. Um, all we've got is underground. Um, we've got a number of uh, P2P uh, interfaces going back to uh, our central core, our central MU controller. Um, I've got my multi blocks over here. Um, I've got my industrial grinder over here um, and my blast furnace over here. Um, I couldn't seem to get the blast furnace to automate. But this works now. Um, if I order some um, some tungsten steel real quick, then we can see it all working actually. You can see I've been mucking about with it. Let's order uh, 10 of these and then it should spring into life. Maybe. <laughs> it's going to make me look like an idiot now. Why are you not working? Why are you not working? Oh, you've gone in here. Why have you gone in there? Um, you need to come out of this way. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Uh, that was a bad, bad demonstration, wasn't it? How terrible. So this should be filtered. Right, so I've got a filter on here, so I'll just change this one to blue and then set this one to insert on blue. So that should stop that from getting all crossed over. You know, let's extract on green, insert on green in there. Um, so I couldn't get it to uh, to work directly with the machine. It just kind of worked with the hopper. Uh, but the hopper seems to do the trick. Now, once that gets to 20, it should start working. Yes. And I've got this one hooked directly up to uh, 2048 EU. Um, and that works well. But this one uh, can't. Yeah, I had to sort of step it down quite a lot with... Uh, I won't hop down there because I'll fall for quite a while. Um, I had to set it up on low voltage. Um, and it's uh, LV, I believe. LV. Um, but... It's automated now, it all works, it's fairly, very really good. Um, so we've got all of the machines from IC2 and from Tech Reborn. Um, not Tech Reborn? Yes, Tech Reborn? Yes, Tech Reborn. Over here, um, I've got these guys that are, uh, these are, they're, well, they're idle at the moment, but they are set up to um, to have uh, Boxite and for Ruby Dust, uh, but we've got plenty of that in stock. I kind of stopped them doing it. These ones seem to lag out a little bit. Yeah, bit of a pain in the ass. Um, and this one is our vacuum freezer here, um, so we can use that one to make us uh, tungsten steel from the uh, from the hot tungsten steel. See, perfect, lovely, automated, and that's hooked up to. I think that's hooked up to high voltage. Is what? Well. Yeah, it's hooked up to high voltage. Yes, because this is all high voltage here. Now the uh, the power is coming from a number of. Uh, medium voltage solar arrays. Now I've got solar arrays on craft now. Uh, well I've had them on there for quite a while um, and I went up to medium. I didn't go as far as doing the high voltage ones um, but we do need to do those. I do need to get those sorted out at some point. Um, but what I wanted to show you was the amount of rubber that we've got now. I've got 25,000 rubber from our rubber tree farm. I've just kind of just been leaving this over here idling. Um, let's whiz over this way. Um, and let me just show you what I've done. Um, so we've got our rubber tree farm, which has been set up for a really long time. Um, but what I did was to um, set it so that it always keeps one tree tap in, in stock. Okay, and it's got a crafting card in there. Um, so it will craft one as and when it needs it. Um, and it'll always keep one in stock. And then behind here, I think I might have showed you this actually. And then behind here, we've got um, got an import bus. Which uh, which is taking out the rubber and the oak and the saplings and stuff like that, uh, and then we've got um, some conduits here that are taking the rubber tree tap or the tap, the tree tap, sorry I should say, and gets me stuck in a wall and puts it in there, uh, and then it takes out the uh, the saplings when it comes out. So that's just keeping a nice steady supply of rubber. It's only it's a very small farm. Um, but what I'll probably do um, to, when I I've, when I've get rid of all this stuff is uh, maybe make that into a bit more of a farming area because things like um, things like rose red and stuff like that, I've been doing those manually. I've just been sort of every now and then um, 
planting some some roses and bone meal in them and then getting the getting the rose red from them and then going around and uh, just picking up roses and stuff i mean this is my usual kind of stomping ground over here this area over here but it's um and there's usually some some flowers and stuff over there that i usually just go and hunt a few flowers every now and then um but it's a bit of a pain in the ass what i'd, I'd like to get up uh, a more of a sustainable system if you like um which would be quite good uh, so that's that really and um, what else have we got i've got a forestry area over here um i've started thinking about um honey i've started thinking about getting honey so this is full up with honey now uh 12 uh probably about 12 buckets worth of honey in there um because i've been looking at uh the creative stuff uh, and the creative ending upgrade and um just been thinking about what stuff i need to get so this is all scented paneling in here um, so we need to get, sorry, I, I moused over that for five, half a second. Um, so this is uh, 4,096 scented panelings that we need to put in there. Um, so let's look at scented panelings for a minute. Um, because we're going to need these. We're going to need these big time. Um, so this needs honey, which is why I've been making the honey. And you get honey just from um, squeezing honeydew or honey drops. I've been just been doing honey drops. Um, which you get from a lot of bee stuff. I've got quite a lot over in the mining world, which I need to kind of pipe back. Um, the scented panelling is beeswax again, pollen cluster again from the industrious bees. So we've got quite a lot of that, um, but we're going to need a lot more. We're going to need like 4,000 of them, aren't we? If we need 4,000 of these and we get one pollen cluster used per one, then we're going to need 4,000 of them and also... 4096 royal jellies as well for this creative ending upgrade holy shit that is a lot of stuff um, i don't even know how well we're doing for that we'll go over and have a look in a minute and we'll check our bees and see how they're doing see if we need to uh, step up production a little bit um, okay so what else have i done um i've got my misc area where i've got all my calculator shite over here um i put some voiding upgrades in these because i kept getting clogged up why is this what is this why is this not working you should be going have i not got you set up i thought i had you set up so you should be extract always active you seem to be seem to not be doing the stuff what's going on oh i think hang on a minute Flawless glass is, is trapped in there, which is clogging the entire system up. And um, I think something got sent back. Did something get sent back? Why are these not analysed? Damage circuit, not analysed. So you should be coming out of red. Um, let's just double check something. Okay, so you're coming out of red. Extract always active. Coming out, coming out, coming out. And you should be. You're not connected to anything else. Will you piss off? Is there some... Right, this is a very important question that I've got to ask. And you might know. Is there something in the AI of Minecraft animals that they like attracted to blocks that the player puts down? Or new blocks that the player's near? Because they seem to... <laughs> it's doing like a fucking Michael Jackson moonwalk. Christ. Right, where was I? Um, so this, this here, not analysed, should come out and should go into here. And that should go into there. And this red stuff, yes, the red stuff, should be voided. I mean, I've got, what upgrades have I got in here? Have I got void? Where's my void? Have I got another void upgrade? Give me this. Chuck it in there. It's already got one in it, so it should be voiding that stuff. Dude, look, I don't want to hit you with my sword, but I'm going to hit you with my sword if you don't get out of my face. Stop watching me as well. You're giving me the creeps. Where's the red face for this one? Where's the red face for it? Um, where's my paw wrench? Papa? There he is. Dude. Come on, I'm trying to film a goddamn episode, Jesus. Um, like this? Yes, like this. 
Um, so what we need to do is maybe pipe some of this stuff out. So come, yeah, give me, um, give me some conduit. This horse is seriously going to get it in a minute, and not in a good way either. Let's get a couple of conduits. <laughs> this is the most annoying horse in the world. Right, out of there. Good. And then into this one. And that should set the whole thing working. Um, if we do extract, where's active. Then this is now working, good. Okay, good. I thought that that would void anything. But maybe it just voids the junk and keeps like the tanzanite and stuff. Which is pretty good if it does that. Um, so what was this? Damaged. Um, so this needs to go... Where can this go? In here. And then this is not analyzed, so this one needs to go like in here when we can find a space. There we go. And this is damaged, so that needs to go in the restoration. No? In this one. There. Bosh. Bosh, bosh, bosh. Done. Right, let's chuck this away. And we'll get away from this goddamn maniac. <laughs> Christ. Okay, right. Let's let's do one. Let's get out of here. Let's go over to Ender IO room. Um, so this is my end. Look at this. It's fancy looking, isn't it? There's some slimes out here um, because we made our home next to a slime island, which is a bit stupid, um, and it's fucking annoying. God. Um, so I've moved over all my Ender IO stuff. I didn't do anything fancy. Just basically moved for moved straight. You know. No problem. I've got this guy set up to uh, take in ruby and tungsten ore, and he's just crafting it. I upgraded it to a double crusher. Pretty good. Let's get away from that slime because it's a really annoying noise. So I showed you the IC2 room, I showed you the forestry room, I showed you the misc room, I showed you my new little area that I've built upstairs, I showed you the old base completely destroyed. And I think that's it. In terms of updates, in terms of updates, that should be fine. Um, look at this. This is much better now. We've not got many channels on here still being occupied. The idea is to move as much stuff as possible over this way. Um, so let's go... Um, well, did I show you these drawers? I showed you the drawers, didn't I? Um, what else do I need to do? I think that's it. I think that's it. Now we need to talk about what we're going to do this episode because um, I've been waffling around updates and things when I should be uh, probably crafting stuff. Um, so the idea... Um, over the next few episodes is to get to atomic multipliers okay atomic multipliers they allow you to uh, basically multiply things um, for a massive massive uh, cost in RF um, if we look maybe we can uh, get some more information about atomic multipliers in our information menu in calculator have we got it have we got info calc here he is info calculator um, let's have a look at this. Uh, let's go to uh, where is it? Where is it? Where is it? Broccoli, not broccoli. Greenhouses. No, 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 no. Atomic multiplier. Here we go. Can quadruple almost any item. Requires seven circuits and fifteen. I think that's fifteen billion RF. Or a hell of a lot of EU. Um, but I think they're worth it in terms of uh, multiplying some things like the old uh, the old creative power sources and things like that. That's definitely worth it. Um, but anyway, to get this, uh, we need some fairly simple stuff. Um, atomic modules, they're okay. Atomic assemblies, we've got loads of those as byproduct from calculators, so that's okay. The thing we're going to struggle with is the old infused diamond because we need dimensional shards and we haven't got any dimensional shards. We need to build a dimension builder and uh, go to the dimension and then we should be able to mine up some dimension shards so that is the aim um, right now to get a dimension builder that is the aim of the game and to build a shitty dimension go there mine up some dimensional shards um, maybe set up a uh, maybe set up a quarry over there and um, just to mine up as much as possible um, so let's look at this guy let's look at dimension builder because this is pretty tough uh, vibrant capacitor bank not bad Iridium reflector, not bad. Helium plasma, so we're going to need uh, a fusion reactor for that. Um, so maybe we can start energy crystal. Oh, this is not too bad actually. Um, but I think this is a multi-block, isn't it? It's a multi-block. Um, so maybe we can maybe we can get a fusion reactor. So let's try. Um, let's go to over to uh, 
central command. I renamed this and gave it a little energy crystal icon. Nice, 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 nice. Um, and I keep pressing E on it. Okay, get off. Thank you very much. Right, um, so what was it we said we were going to make? Oh, fuck. Already. Already we're all over the place. Dimension Builder, wasn't it? And then it was something to do with this, this one. Um, fusion Reactor. Let me type it in so I don't keep forgetting it. Fusion Reactor. Okay, Fusion Reactor. Now, um, it was Energy Flow Circuits, which we've already got on Craft, I believe. Have we got these on Craft? Energy Flow Circuits. Yes, we do. Um, and how many was it we needed? We needed six, didn't we? So let's get six of these. And that is quite a lot of crafting to do, but nothing that's beyond us. Um, and we'll have to keep an eye on this because uh, we've moved some stuff and we've mucked about with channels and things, but everything seems to be going okay. Nothing seems to be failing. Everything seems to be working all right. So what's it doing right now? It's making advanced control circuits. It's crafting some enriched alloys, which is going fairly fast by the looks of things. I expect to see that going a bit faster because that's supposed to be in a uh, in um, one of the enriching factories, I think it is. Um, but it's crafting those energy flow circuits anyway. That's pretty good. Um, and then we need to get some of these energy crystals. So um, I think we've got energy crystals on craft. Yeah, I think we have energy crystals so we need two of these so let's get two of those going lovely um, and then we just need a fusion coil which we've definitely got on craft because um, we use some of those what did we use these for what did we use the fusion coils for Christ look at all this stuff so we're gonna have to energy flow circuits we're gonna have to craft another four of those because it's going to use those up so let's set that one off and then let's get some more energy flow thingies, energy flow doodars, four more of these. There, nice. Okay, um, so that shouldn't take too long to craft. Uh, they should be ticking along quite nicely. So it's making these neutron reflectors and uh, some superconductors. And we've got some nichrome heating coils in stock. What I might do is go and sling some more stuff in the old... Uh, so where's IC2 over here? Whoops. Um, so this is our rolling machine here. Um, so if we um, if we want some more nichrome heating coils, what do we need? Some nickel and some chrome, isn't it, that we need? I think. Nichrome. So chrome and nickel, and it's four nickel to one chrome. Um, so say if we wanted to make another... 10. Let's get some chrome. Actually, let's just get um, let's get a quarter of a stack. Let's get 16. And then we can get some uh, some nickel as well. Nickel. This one. Good. Uh, let's put these ones in the middle here. And let's go like this. Nice. Is that going to work? Yes, it's going to work. And in terms of getting these back out, how do we get these back out? So we're extracting on brown, brown, brown. Um, so if we come across here, let's get some conduit. Conduit. We can extract, I think we can extract from here on brown. Um, I'm not sure about automating this uh, simply because um, of how these things are, are arranged, but I think I should be able to pull out of it without too many problems. So is this going to pull out? Are you pulling out? You're not pulling out. Okay. Um, so this one I've got. I'm extracting from the side on this one. I'm just checking. Just going to check that I've got this set up. Extract always active, and it's going to go into there, and it should be able to deliver it into there. Okay. Let's uh, let's destroy a bit of this wall. Actually, let me just quickly do something. Let me get rid of these upgrades in here. And I can actually use this without it destroying half the base. Okay, good. Uh, let's say extract from the side then. Extract, always active, on brown. Come around there, like that. 
Is that going to extract? No? Christ. There's always one, isn't there? There's always one. Okay. What's this? Oh. Oh, it's for the recipes. Okay. Um, hmm. All right. We'll just leave that as it is. Um, it might be out of that side. It might be out of the right side that it ejects from, but I've kind of got this guy here now. And I'm not going to move it for the amount of stuff we're going to need this for. Um, I'm not going to bother moving it. Um, so maybe we can now make, anyway, our, uh, our fusion reactor. How are we doing with this? Have we got the stuff that we need to make this guy? Um, it was these energy crystals. It was these energy crystals, wasn't it? I thought we had these in stock. Energy crystals, what's the problem? Did we use them for something else? Did we use them for something else? Okay, maybe we did. Let's get those made now. And they're just going to be compressed. And shouldn't take too long. Good. Okay, so now we've got those two. Yes, fusion reactor, nice. Um, let's put the par wrench back. Let's put these uh, mining upgrades back. Let's get rid of this flawless glass. And the limestone um, we can put back. Where was it? Um, well, it's going to go here, but yeah, I'll fiddle around with this. Let's put the limestone back in there for the moment. So, um, if I put this down, um, I'm going to need a wrench to pick it back up with. Um, and what wrench have I got? I think I've got the Tech Reborn wrench. At least I thought I had the Tech Reborn wrench. Did I lose it somewhere? Let's just get another one. There we go. Right, okay. Um, so this needs it needs a multi-block around it. Um, and I might, in terms of a multi-block, um, I'm not sure. It needs lots of EU as well. Um, and we've got quite a bit of EU um, in stock, but not a lot. <laughs> we've got much, we've got some, but we've not got a lot. So I've got these two MFSUs here with 40 million EU in each one, um, and then the, the EU coming down here. So um, if we're going to put it anywhere, it needs to go here, really. Um, well, let's just look at the size of the multi-block first. So I think it goes in the middle of the multi-block, so let's just see. Um, Assembly multi block. That was a fucking good guess, wasn't it? Look at that. Um, so how many of these do we need then? Jesus Christ. Let's let's count these. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-three, twenty-four, twenty, twenty-four. Christ, twenty-four of these, and these are expensive. These things, because these are the fusion. Oh shit. <laughs> Because these are fusion coils, aren't I? I just knocked half my stuff over on my desk. Um, let's order 24 of these. And hopefully we've got enough stuff in stock. What are we missing? We're missing iridium. Oh, shit. Oh, shit. And with Jesus Christ, look at the amount of beryllium that we're short of. Um, 32 more nichrome heating coils. Right, so <laughs> maybe, um, maybe we need to cool our jets a little bit for a minute and uh, think about iridium. Mm. Crikey. Um, where have I got my stuff? I've been thinking about what we're going to do for Iridium, actually. Um, and I'm going to do it with Solars. Because I think Solars sounds like a good idea. Um, so I've, I've seen some people say that all you do is you just invest all of your resources in the advanced hybrid solar panels. How's this doing? Oh, shit! Look at all this! We've got loads! What was I complaining about? Nice! Okay. Maybe setting that up to, uh, to auto-craft a ton of uh, a ton of iridium wasn't such a bad idea then. Let's get some more iron and chuck some more iron in there. I forgot that I actually did that. Let's get loads of this. There we go. That can all go in there. Nice. Why is this not? Oh, 
Oh, that's because I've used up all the power. Oh, that's because I've disconnected the power. It's because I haven't got these switched on, I don't think. Yes, yeah, so I haven't got these switched on. Let's turn up the... Uh... Oh, right, that's why. Um, I need to get some quad fuel rods and keep them in stock. Yes, quad fuel rods in stock. Um, let's get our rubber suit. I can hear someone sneaking up behind me. There's like mobs all over the place here. I thought I had the thingy to stop these mobs from getting spawned. Here it is, look. Hazmat. That was it, wasn't it? Alright, let's get rid of all of this stuff. Let's put on all of this stuff. And then we can say uh, quad fuel rods. Quad fuel rods. You need to go always in stock over here. Okay, then that'll start filling these guys up. Nice. I did turn these all off because um, it was before I figured out that I could switch on multi-threading in my launch settings. It was it was really lagging out, and I was trying my best to keep everything stopping lagging out. So I've got 400 of those in stock. All washing at the moment is switched off. I can switch this on at a flick of a switch if I want to, but I won't. Oh shit! Oh fuck! Here we go. Look, I'm gonna die now. Get rid of it. Am I going to die? I'm not going to die. I had a bit of radiation poisoning, but luckily I've got my nutrition module that just made me tank it. No problem. Right, let's chuck some of this iridium in stock. Nice. Good. Loads and loads of iridium. So how much iridium have we actually got? 642. Quite shy of uh, our 4096 that we need for our creative vending upgrade, but this is uh, this is going to carry on processing Iridium, and we'll just leave this running for quite a while. Um, so what I need to do is to set that up in the mining world. We'll probably do that next episode, actually. It needs to be sorted out. Look at these chuckleheads. You're right, guys. Now this... This has got no power. That's the problem. Oh, shit. Thank God for protective bases. And this has got no power, that's why all this stuff is spawning around our house. Um, because I've destroyed it. Yes, I've destroyed it. I wonder if I've got a power cell. Have I got a power cell? Power cell. Let's make a power cell. Nice. And I've got cards linked to four. Good. Let's go up and let's... Uh, Stop these chuckleheads from spawning. Right, link there. And then all sides set to out. And then this should now be getting power. Nice. Right, that should stop those guys from spawning. Um, I put a um, an octodic capacitor, which makes the range on this freaking huge. Up. Look at the range. Jesus Christ. And I've got another one. Over in the temple as well. So this entire area should be mob free once these chuckleheads despawn. That is right. But there's even one little punk sitting on the roof of our thing over there with a temple. God damn. God damn chuckleheads everywhere. Okay, so what are we going to do? Um, so we were talking about the fusion coils, weren't we? Because that's what we was going to try and make. So fusion coils, uh, what are we short of if we want to make 24 of these? Um, so we are no longer short of iridium, but we are very sure of uh, beryllium cells. Yes, beryllium cells, and I think that is that is it, apart from the nichrome heating coils. So we need another 32 uh, nichrome heating coils and another 188 beryllium. Now, uh, beryllium, uh, we can get these going. No problem. If I type in beryllium, 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 there we go. Um, it was made from enderpearl dust in my industrial electrolyzer. So we've got four industrial electrolyzers. If we go over to our IC2 room, we can repurpose our industrial electrolyzers. So these four right here, let me just bust this a little bit. There we go. And we can say that we want to keep enderpearl dust in stock at all times. 
Um, and Ender Pearls. Uh, we've got a bit of a problem because we've not got many. Let's make a hundred Ender Pearl dust just to kick things off. Go. Right, Ender Pearl dust. Let's keep you in stock at all times. And then each one of these is going to take in Ender Pearl dust. Okay. Let's get rid of the rubies on this one. And that one's already got Ender Pearl dust on it. And then this one has also got Ender Pearls. Good. Okay, so what should happen? Um, let me just get something, get some glowstone or something to put around here. I need to figure out how I'm going to light this area up. Well, actually, no. Torches are fine, aren't they? Torch. Torches. Do you like a torche? Let's get a couple of torches. Just like there. There for the moment, that's fine. So this is making the enderpearl dust. And these should start getting the enderpearl stuff in stock. No? Where's the end of end pearl dust going then? End of pearl dust should be in stock. Should be getting sucked out of there. Extract. Ah, oh, it's because I haven't got this uh, this switched on. I've got this active with signal, you see, because uh, these lag out quite a bit as well. So I just had that export bus reduced. So once that gets to 16, that should start kicking off. Nice. So they're going to be making this beryllium cells. It's going to be making, um, if we look at beryllium, it takes 65 seconds. So it's a minute per uh, beryllium. Then we're going to make him four. We need 188. So it's going to take quite a few minutes, actually. Um, it's going to take quite a few minutes to make all those. And uh, so we need 16 times 188, I've just got a calculator. So we need 3,000 odd ender pearls, so we better go and start our ender pearl, enderman farm up. Pretty sharpish. Where, where the bloody hell's uh, the old base? Let's go over to here. Let's start this up. Right, that was a bit too fast. A bit too fast there. Right, I need enderman dems. There we go. Come on, boys, give us your pearls. One Enderman. That was not really, uh, not really what I was looking for. I was hoping for something a bit more, a bit more spectacular than that. That was a bit better. Yeah, nice. Just check I haven't completely fucked this up as well. Is this getting power? Hope this is getting power. I hope I haven't cut the power. I think the power should be okay. How are we doing? Power? Power runs along here. Hmm, maybe I have. Maybe I have goosed the power. I don't even know where I am. Right, power, power, power. Let me down. Let me down here. Oh shit. That wasn't a good idea. Right, we definitely know that it's under here, don't we? Okay, so there's the power. Off, stop me being on fire, please. What's this? That's okay. Yeah, that's going to get power, it's not a problem. Right, if I could just stop being on fire for a few minutes, that would be great. Um, so 29 we've got in stock at the moment. So what we probably want to do is uh, get some ender pearls and put them on... Auto craft on our macerator, I think, just so it keeps those going because uh, that beryllium is going to be a bit of a problem. So, where's our macerator? It's here. Um, so, ender pearls, you will be on there. Okay, so I'm going to leave that thing running um, overnight, I think, because I'm not going to sit like a scrub for five hours waiting for this bloody thing to do what it's doing. And uh, then we'll come back in the next episode where we'll carry on building our Dimension Builder. Um, apologies if this episode was covering a bit more of the base moves and not too much progress. What we'll do next episode, uh, I'll do it straight after this one. So there'll be nothing 
to cover in terms of progress it will just be straight in back into uh, progressing with the dimension builder so i hope you guys have enjoyed this episode if you have then please leave a like and a comment and i will see you guys next time